Look at your cute hat. Look at your cutie. Good morning. But true story, do you know why I'm wearing a hat today? Probably because your hair greasy as hail. Exactly. <laughs> Yesterday I got carried away you with call. work and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna wash my hair tonight. So today- Do you want the real truth? <laughs> do they want the real truth? Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you want the real truth? I want to see yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. The real truth of why Sarit's wearing a hat today. And um, we need you to comment, uh, spill the beans. Spill the beans. Let me, let me move this a little bit. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> One of us is taller than the other. You're going to have to comment. Otherwise, we're not going to spill the bean. Tammy okay. wants to know. So, we, we yesterday, we, okay, so Sundays, we really try, okay, we're going we're gonna to take a day, you know, we're going to recoup, we're going to reset ourselves so that we are fresh and ready to go starting Monday for the week. So, you know, Sundays is a more of a rest day from Training and from work. Well. Definitely from training. Well, when you have millions of lives to change, you can't help but start working. <laughs> We're, we did not succeed at taking the day off from work yesterday. However, we love what we do. So when I say work, it's like it, it's still something fun. Okay, anyway, so we got carried away. We created a new program. You'll find out about it soon. Okay, so we get carried away and it was like, we ended up eating dinner. It's a Sunday and we're like, yeah, we're gonna go to bed early. So we ended up eating dinner at like eight. 8.15. 8.15, early for us to go to bed is like 8.39, yeah? 8.45. 8.30, 8.45, okay. And so we ate dinner at like 8.15, 8.30, then we went to bed at like nine something, but as we were eating dinner, you were, or before we ate dinner, you're like, do you want to shower? And I was like, we shower every day, but <laughs> you know what? Like we're very on top of our sleep schedule. And by the time that we were done with dinner, it was like nine o'clock and we're like, shit, we're already down to seven hours of sleep. Um, so we didn't shower yes yesterday. Yeah, because we're gonna shower in four hours after a workout, anyways. So whatever. So um, and admit, like, there's been days where you're just like, nope, I gotta something's gotta give, right? I gotta let something slide because my priorities. We wanted to sleep more than we wanted to shower. Let's just be real. Sleep over shower. Do you agree? <laughs> sleep over shower. Well, those were like the two things to choose from at that point. So it's right. like, well, shit, no. I'd rather be, I mean, we're quarantined anyways. Only one who's gonna smell me is me or you. This is actually an amazing segue to today's topic. Yes. So today we're right. gonna talk about Let, perspective. Yeah, let's see who's here and say good morning. Hello everyone. Wow, Jean Marie, Jeanette, Monique, Monique Tammy, Carissa, Eric, Dawn, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Monique. Crystal, Nicole, Emily, Sterling, Jason, Cat. Good morning, you guys. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about perspective because it's Monday, Mindset Monday. I have to be honest, mindset topics are my absolute favorite. Most of what we talk about is mindset, but today it's purely about that. It's so, my favorite. So last night we basically chose to skip taking a shower, which is why I'm wearing a hat today because my ha my hair is greasy AF and you know what? It is what it is. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so we chose to adhere to our sleep schedule and as a byproduct, we had to sacrifice something. And what we sacrificed was a quick rinse. Um, so we're a little on the dirtier side today, okay? Good At thing. least we didn't work out yesterday. Right, we did not we work out yesterday. Sweaty. Otherwise, that would, that would have been gross because yeah, no. we shower immediately after we work out. But anyways, you know, a lot of times in life, we, we start believing that we have to do something when 
ultimately everything that we do is a choice, right? Everything that you either end up doing or not doing is your choice. And, you know, right now is a perfect time to start, you know, reinventing yourself and creating a life that you choose to live mm -hmm. rather than, you know, being so stuck in the grind, believing that you have to do all the things that you have to do. Have you ever felt, have you ever felt like you had to do something, um, like, um, I mean, feeling like there was, you had to do something that you didn't want to do mm -hmm. um, and you did it anyways. And what was the reason? Yeah. That's, That's a really question. good question. That's my question. When was the last time you chose to do something you didn't want to do? And why did you do it if you didn't want to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, I think especially as women, we get into, you know, this thought pattern that we have to do certain things because, I mean, look at, look at, at the way we're brought up in society. When we're kids, we have to go to school. We, we don't have so much of a choice when we are kids. Um, when you're dependent in when, general. Right, because we're dependent, right? So our parents choose for us, society chooses for us. Um, I'm sure that, you know, every once in a while, like there will be this rebellious child who just so is so deeply in tune with what they want to do. And they might say, fuck it. Like, this is not my thing. Um, but for the most part, like you get what we're saying, right? Like you have to go to school when you're a kid because that's what the law enforces. That's what your parents tell you. You're dependent, so on and so forth. Right. However, you know, once, once we're done with school, life is now up to us, mm -hmm. right? But because we've been taught as we were kids and as we were dependent on, you know, our, our parents or guardians, whatever, caregivers, to, to abide to the rules, we grow up thinking that we have to live a certain way, right? We have to do certain things. We behave we, a certain we way. We have to go to college. We have to do what our parents told us to do, right? I want you to or, drop or we have to do what, what is the norm in society. But the question is, do you want to be normal? Do you want to be the norm? Because norm is average. Yeah. So do you want to be that way? Um, and I think, you know, it. it it's... I think that we we often don't recognize that we have a choice too. And right. so, you know, that's that's the part that sucks the most. Right. And so hopefully today we can bring some awareness to the fact that even your job, well, this is a weird time right now, but let's say, you know, pre-coronavirus, even your job, you have a choice to go or not. You don't have to work. You can be homeless. It's a choice right? I have to work if I want this result, right? So, you know, even things were like, oh, I have to, um, I'm totally drawing the blank. Anything. I mean, On things that people really truly believe, you know, to I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you some personal stories with regards to the, to the have tos, right? That I, you know, I, at first I believed, but then I, I started thinking differently, right? And that's why we're talking about this today because, you know, this page and this show is all about, you know, creating a community where we give you a voice to express yourself in, in a way that makes you think differently mm -hmm. um, so that you can live your, your boldest, best life. But like, I remember... Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a very conservative Jewish home, um, it, you know, and if you're Jewish, then you, you, you can probably relate, you know, that most Jewish parents want their kids to either be a doctor or a lawyer, right? So I went into college, you know, being on the pre-med track, feeling like I have to. Meanwhile, I did not give two... You hated it. 
two cents about, you know, what I was studying. But, you know, it's because I went straight from high school into college, right? And I, I grew up, right? Like, knowing that I have to do, I have to go to school, I have to this, I have to that, because, you know, like your parents instill that in you. Um, and that's just like a social construct, right? Um, however, while I was in college and I was on my own, I started realizing that, hmm, like this is not the right thing for me. In fact, the, the biggest thing that college taught me, to be honest with you guys, is to find who I really am. I think right? that it I think that if more kids could go into college with that like I'm going to figure out what I want to do and who I like that's an expensive for one that's an expensive way to figure out who the fuck you are and, and what you want to do in life but yeah. like we're not we don't know who we are at age 18 or 19 or even like 25 like we don't know who we are there are there are exceptions and very few people who are very intuitively connected to themselves and that's incredible but it's like we don't feel like we have choices so we just do what other people do thinking that that's just how we have to do it yeah yeah <clears throat> so you know the purpose of this is to make you think differently and and know that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do ultimately your life is your choice Right, and your life right now is a byproduct of all of the choices that you made. Choices that made you choose to go the path of, you know, following with what others have told you to do, or maybe deviating from that. But ultimately, it is your choice, right? Um, so, you know, the body that you live in right now, the body that you want to live in, um, you know, the, the relationships that you're in, the people that you're surrounding yourself with, um, you know, the career that you have or the responsibilities that you have, the roles that you play, it's all ultimately a byproduct of the choices that you make. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, you guys, one of the... I think one of the biggest identifiers of, of happiness is that happy people acknowledge the fact that everything in life is a choice mm -hmm. and they choose to act in a way that's in congruency with what their beliefs are. Or what they desire. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. And then when you understand it's a choice, it's based off of a desired outcome. Right. And then you start living life by design, right? Wow, that's freedom. That's freedom. Life by design. Right? And that's why, you know, we're talking about this today in order to create awareness so that, you know, if you thought the other way around and you're like, oh shit, like I actually do have a choice. Like maybe I don't have to do this if I don't want to. No, you don't, right? But you have to be aware that everything in life, right? Like whatever choice you make has a consequence. The reality is that for one, people don't think that they have a choice because they haven't told, they haven't been taught to think differently, right? Mm -hmm. And for two, they lack the courage um, in order to face the consequences that may come along the way. There's nothing wrong with you know, overcoming hardships. In fact, that is the best way to find growth and accomplishment and happiness. Really, I think that on the other side of, of anything that scares you is probably one of the, you know, um, most liberating things. And mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you guys were Lululemon, but you know, we're huge fans of Lululemon. In fact, I used to work for the brand. If anybody knows them or can get us, uh, what's that thing called? What? ambassadors we want to be ambassadors so if anybody knows anybody who works for lululemon tell them that we want to be ambassadors but um side note yeah we will be that too but you know the, when i used to work for the brand you know they they have a lot of mantras right and one of their mantras is do something every day every day do something that scares you 
because when you do more things that scare you, you grow more. And the more, and the more you grow at a faster rate, the happier you become, right? The mundane like makes you feel stale and blah because you are not challenged and it's not exciting, right? Um, it could like even roll into an entirely another topic too of, um, oh my gosh. What were we just talking about before this? Something that scares you? Yes, um, getting like um, the, the fear of failure stopping you from living the life you wanna live, right? right? Like you've probably heard before, we regret more of the chances we don't take Right. Right. Then, then what we do. And a lot of time we're afraid to take it. We're afraid to make a decision we know is right in our heart because we're scared of something. We're afraid to fail. We're afraid to, that, you know, and failure is a, if you see failure as a learning process, like I heard the term one time when you're starting something new, fail fast. And what that means is Ooh, that's the more, the more failures you can have quickly, the better you get at it faster, mm -hmm. right? So let's take weight loss or fat loss, for example, or changing your body composition. Um, you know, it, we're afraid sometimes to invest in ourselves because we've done so many things that have failed. Well, if you continue failing the same way, yeah, I would also be scared to invest any kind of energy or resource into that, right? But... If you try something new, mm -hmm. all that can happen is if you fail, you learn another way to not do that thing, mm -hmm. right? So every time you fail, you're one step closer to succeeding as long as you learn from it. Yep. If you take nothing away, shame on you, right? And But I've been guilty of that. So, you know... Um, when you don't know, you don't know. And that's why we're totally. bringing it up. And so I, I think a lot, what I'm talking about choosing is like a lot of people are afraid to make a choice because they're afraid to fail. But if you fail, you give yourself an opportunity to become better. So fail fast so that you can get on the right path sooner. Yeah. Does that make sense? Give me an amen. Yeah. So... You know, one time I heard, um, I think it was Beatrice who said it in his book, Man Up, is like the worst decision to make is to not make a decision mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And the difference mm -hmm. between living a life by design and just letting life happen to you is by not making decisions, by, by going with the flow. And when I mean go with the flow, I mean like do more of what others tell you to do. Okay, like you grow up as a kid, you do what your parents tell you to do. Um, and then when you, let's say you go to college, like you go on the path that you were told that you should follow. And then, you know, like you, you get a good job and you're told by your, your manager or whoever oversees you what to do. And you live life being told what to do by other people. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't be fully happy and content going that route. However, I know from my own personal experience that when I followed the herb and, you know, I did what was expected of me just because it was expected of right you. i was i was i found myself extremely unhappy and at, and at the beginning it's intense right like in my self-exploration journey it went you know from realizing that you know i'm i'm actually gay that's for one um for two i'm like i've had so many issues with you're gay <laughs> with eating disorders right um and i never really faced it that that was overwhelming right but like it's all stepping stones right it like you you can choose to think of it as a stumbling block or a stepping stone but every challenge is a stepping stone that's leading you in the right direction to go to the place that you're meant to go however as long as you see it as a stepping stone right however you it's up to you for one to be aware right and to follow your gut right it takes a lot of courage to to stand up for yourself and to say 
you know what? I, I'm not quite sure what I want yet, but I know that this is not for me. I think you Oprah Winfrey said that. I think she said, you know, one of the most powerful things in life is sometimes we don't need to know what it is that we want to do, but knowing what you don't want to do is a first step. Yeah, and in your body, like we're actually, we're just listening to, if you have never heard uh, Super Soul Conversations with, uh, with Oprah, um, it's incredible. And I would look up the pod, I think it's on a podcast yeah. version. Um, but we, we listened to um, Alicia Keys yesterday. Man, I love her. And they were talking about a resounding yes, right? Like Oprah's idea of this, like, when you know something's right, you feel it in your whole body. Like, you know it's right. Your mind may try to talk you out of things because that's its job is to keep you safe. Keep you safe. But safety is also within your comfort zone and nothing amazing or spectacular happens inside your comfort zone. So your brain literally is fighting against what your soul and what you know is right. So you have being aware of that, like Sarit's saying, like first thing is just to be aware, is to understand when you feel something and your whole being is telling you yes, but your brain's like, oh, but this, oh, but that, oh, but maybe I'm gonna trip here, oh, but maybe, you know, I'll lose there, or, you know, like your brain's job is to keep you safe and keep you comfortable and keep you out of danger. Right. But when you know it's right and you take the step, man, you have so you experience so much freedom. So I want to ask you guys a question, you know, what is one thing that you've been told to do, right? Like we all come from- That you didn't want to do. Yeah. Or just told to do in general. No, in okay. general, right? Like, I mean, if this is the first time we're talking about this, then uh, I mean, I can only imagine that not everybody has lived life by design and that's why we're here, right? Because we're all on on a quest to improve ourselves and our lives right but you know like we all come from different upbringings and different backgrounds and different cultures and you know like of course you know it's all about the connection that we can create with you guys the more we know you the better we can help and i'd love to know what are some of the things you know that were expected of you that you were told that you have to do when you've grown up Right. How many people have been told to get a job? I was told to get a job. My dad, my dad's like, oh, you want a cell phone? Get a job. You know? Um, but then I understand like, oh, if I want a cell phone, I get a job. But I know in my mind, like I have felt trapped within a job before. And I'm like, I have to go. I have to go. I have to go. Right. You know, but really I was choosing to go because I knew that the consequence of choosing to go meant that I made money and meant that I could keep uh, paying rent and my cell phone and car insurance and all the things that I wanted to keep. Um, and I knew that the consequence of not going to work meant I didn't make money from there and I couldn't pay these things, right? So um, thinking outside the box then goes like, well, instead of working here, what could I do that I want to do? Like I never thought, oh, maybe let me just try to find something else. I just knew that I had a job already. And if I left that job to try to get a new job, what if I didn't get the new job? Yeah. And I'm fucked. Yeah. Right. So I felt like I had to go, but really that it was still my choice to stay. Yeah. I want to read some comments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I was discouraged not to be in the profession I'm in now, wondering if they were right. Tammy, I'm not quite sure. I'm a little bit confused on that. Tammy, we know you're in transition, so I'm not sure which mm -hmm. one you're referring to. Sarah was told to be an accountant. Um, growing up, I was told you can't be an artist. Uh huh. Yeah. People, people too, who, who love you, who care about you will try to keep you safe, right? Like, oh, do you know the uh, percentage of people who actually make it into the NFL or actually make it to be an actress or yeah. whatever? And they'll be like, you know, I just don't want to see you get hurt. And you're like, if your mission is strong enough and big enough, like you'll make it work. Um, 
I was told to get a job at 15 by my dad. Stick to psychology, not be supported while switching marketing degree. They got all the funding. Yeah, sometimes people won't support you if they don't think what you're doing is right. But what they don't think what you're doing is right for what they would want to choose. But they don't live through you. They don't. They don't see through your eyes. They don't yeah. feel through your body. Right. So that's okay. You know what? If you are actually on a mission, you will find that you don't get support from people you thought you would get support from. Yeah. What does Michael have to say? Michael has to say, "I'm still being told I need to get a job." <laughs> The government is keeping me from my job until at least June or July. From the job, the government is keeping you from a job. Not every job. There are still jobs, right? There yeah. are still people working. Right, but with regards to that, um, you know, right now the unemployment rate is really high. Mm -hmm. Just because the government is keeping you away from one job, and this this is with hopes to inspire anybody who is in this position, doesn't mean that you can't, you know, um, cross paths right now and just switch to, to something else in the interim, right? Because by the end of the day, your job is to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Right. And if the government does not allow something, then figure out a way where you can make it work. Got it. I mean, I would still say there are ways like anybody determined will find a way. And mm -hmm. I'm, and I mean, this, this can be a completely different conversation. Yeah, um, I want you to I want you to figure it out and I actually want to post it because I want to challenge you to think differently. Like just do do like do a Google search and be relentless about oh, it. Oh, Michael said flexjobs.com website for work hiring from home hiring now. Thanks, Michael. Boom. Thanks, that's Michael. That's awesome. That's epic. See, that's why we have this there we go. community. This is amazing. There we go. I Thank you it. so much for that support, Michael. Hopefully that helps. Now it is your choice to go to flexjobs.com or not to see what they may have there. What do you have to lose? Yeah. Um, Sarah. My sister's an essential worker, but I'm made to feel like nothing while I'm doing all I can to support myself for the future. Go to flexjobs.com. <laughs> okay, so you guys, you know, I think this was a really powerful topic and a great way to start the week. So... You, you're now aware that, that you, you have a choice with regards to every single situation. It doesn't matter what your parents say. It doesn't matter what your loved ones say. It doesn't matter what society says or the government says. And there are, all, there are things and there will always be things that happen that are outside of your control. The question is, what do you do in response to it to continue to take care of you? There's always a way. If you have a will, there is absolutely a way. You just have to think outside the box. Right. And, and that's challenging. We're not going to tell you it's going to be easy because it's not. But it's all a matter of what are you willing to sacrifice? And we had a topic about that in order to, to pursue what it is that you want. So now you're aware that you have a choice, right? Um, knowing that your next step is follow your gut with regards to anything, right? Like, if, if you wake up in the morning and you're not excited about doing something, like take a minute like to think, like, why am I feeling this way? Like ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Right? Mm -hmm. and, and literally write it down. And if you start noticing a trend, you'll be able to find the answer. And remember, you don't have to have the, to have the right answer right now, but you have to stay in tune with, you know, what your, what your intuition is telling you. I truly believe that most people who end up not living their best life is because they just, you know, they went through the motions. They did what they were told to do. They didn't take a second to ask themselves, like, why am I feeling this way? Like, what do I need to do in order to change that? How will I feel when I do X, Y, Z, right? Like, if you don't have the answers, 
you will never be able to hold on to that emotion and the emotion is going to be the only thing that's going to help you to take action. If you don't take action, one thing is guaranteed. You're not going to get the right results that you're looking for. So ask yourself, like if you look at yourself in the mirror, right, and you see your body and you're unhappy with it, ask yourself, why am I unhappy? Like write it down, like all the details, right? Like if you wake up in the morning and you're about to do something that you're not thrilled about, ask yourself, why am I not thrilled about it right now? We're all on this planet for a reason and life is so precious. Like I want like to just help you to put things into perspective. Let's say if you were to live another 50 years, right? That means that you have only 2,500 weekends left in your life. Knowing how short your time spent is, I truly believe knowing that everything is temporary, that if I don't give it my all, if I don't go for my wildest dreams, then I'm going to regret it, right? And in life, by the end of the day, you only regret the chances that you didn't take, okay? So this episode was inspired to, to help you to, to think differently, to know that you have a choice. The only times you might not have a choice is, God forbid, you know, if you grow up in an extremely radical community, right? Um, that does not allow you to doesn't mean that you still can't stand up for yourself because there have been amazing stories of women who have, but you know, like this is what makes America great. Like you're not going to be stoned to death because you're thinking differently. Can I say something? Yeah. Um, I want to throw out a disclaimer too, because I don't want you to confuse this with, Oh, you should never do anything you don't want to do. It's still a choice. And there are times I choose to do things I don't necessarily want to do because I want the result. So just because you're not enjo particularly enjoying something that you're choosing to do in the moment doesn't mean it's wrong. Mm -hmm. If the outcome outweighs the tasks and decisions required to achieve the outcome, the tasks and decisions required may be worth it, right? So um, let's take a, a workout, for example. Mm -hmm. Like you may have a really hard, crazy workout and in the middle of it, you're like, oh my God, this is not fun. I am not having fun right now. But you want the result. You want the body. You want to feel confident, right? You want to put on your clothes and feel amazing. So you're willing to make a choice that isn't necessarily something that you particularly enjoy at the moment because you want the result. And that's completely fine um, because the result is also what drives um, accomplishment and empowerment and happiness and all of that, which is what we're all striving to achieve. And so, um, yeah, somebody said burpees, ahem, <laughs> sterling. Yeah, you know, but it's okay to make a choice to do something that maybe you don't want to do. And also, let's say right now, getting a job that you don't necessarily like might be worth it because you want the money. You might not like the job, but right now you have to do what you have to do. So you choose to do anything that you can because you want the result. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that the choice you make has to just make be all peachy and rainbows and sunshine all the time, but the result has to be worth the choice. I want to add one last thing before we close off. Also, when you when knowing that you have a choice, before making any decision, ask yourself this question because something that I'm seeing that's very common, especially right now, is that people are making choices out of fear, not not out of desire, right? So many places are opening back up because they fear that something will happen rather than trying to think differently or, you know, what can I do to, you know, to make my life better, you know, considering the change, like, you know, life post coronavirus is never going to be the same. However, like, you know, there's states that are completely opening back up this week. personally. I think it's a bit ridiculous because I think it's going to come back like a boomerang. Right, so it's like short-term pain for long-term gain. So always ask yourself before making a decision, am I 
following through with this because this is a choice that I'm making out of fear or is it for the greater good? Mm -hmm. Right? To, right now is the perfect myself. time to challenge yourself to, to think in a way that will create a better future for you and for the society that you live in for the greater good. Right? Mm -hmm. So that, that was my last thing. Um, okay, let's go over some housekeeping. Things. Yeah, I, you know, I see, I see a bunch of people too saying like, this is a killer one. I think that you're talking about the episode. I'm actually not sure, but, um, you know, if you feel inspired or if you feel like, oh my God, you know, if you had some aha moments or like, oh my God, yes, truth or preach or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. During this episode, please share it. Please share it on your page, um, and tag your friends that need to see it. Um, because we are truly on a mission to transform the lives of millions of people. And we will through the same movement, nutrition, and lifestyle habits that have transformed ours. Mark our words. It's going to happen. Millions. And you get to be some of the first ones. So uh, please share. It means the world to us. And we have also an announcement to make. Yes. For anybody who's choosing to, you know, intentionally keep on challenging their body in order for it to to come out better on the other side we have an incredible opportunity for you coming your way it is called the raw transformation challenge okay we run those like three times a year and the next round will be starting next week okay may so 4th today open registration begins okay and it closes on friday Okay, so this is our first time announcing it for the week. Yes, we will be making a post later because if we were to not provide you with this opportunity, we will be disservicing you guys because we know that if you're here, you want to better your life, you want to better your body because you know that bettering your body is the catalyst to bettering your life. Let's be real, if you're not confident in the skin you're in, you're not going to be confident pursuing other things. Because how you do anything is how you do everything and it all starts from within. By the way, the transformation program has a lot, a lot of mindset tools to help you overcome all the struggles that you've been facing with so that you can come out stronger on the other side. It is an eight week program, okay? It's gonna go over nutrition, training, and mindset, okay? It is a group program. There's two options. There is a regular and a VIP option. The regular, you're basically just in group. There is a weekly coaching call per week. Um, yes, you, you get to chat with us on Facebook by posting on the wall, that sort of thing. The VIP option allows you to have a monthly 30-minute call with us. Two one-on-one -on -one okay. calls. Yes. Um, we will post the link below so that you can take a look at the page. If you have any questions, please feel free to message us. If you've already um done this program then please uh, you know drop a comment right now drop a heart if you have um done already the if you've already registered because there's a pre-registration for the challengers that we had in the last challenge that we just ran then also drop a comment uh because i saw tammy life-changing get out of your comfort zone and join us look if you like these episodes and these are free imagine what you get when you pay a little bit yeah Here we just tell you the what's and the, the what's, right? Like we bring awareness, but we don't tell you the, the why's and the how's, right? Because we, we simply don't have enough time. So if you're at a point where you're like, you know what? Like, this is my time, my time to change right now. This is why we're doing this. It is for you. Um, and of course, we'll be honored and thrilled to be your guide um, on, a, on a deeper level. And, and help, it, go ahead. Yeah, and just and and helping you pursue your best body so that you can pursue your best life. Yeah, and I'm gonna be fully transparent because if you don't know by now, that's just how we roll. Um, when we make the post, I'm gonna tag people who are already registered, and I'm gonna tag people who have done it in the past. Yes, because I we want to get as many possible people involved in this because it is truly life changing. And if we didn't think mm -hmm. that we had the power to transform you. 
we wouldn't be preaching so hard, okay? So if I tag you in any post that we make, can you please make a comment below telling people what your experience is? I am, this is public, I am not telling you what you need to say. All I'm saying is can you please tell them your honest opinion and your own personal experience with working with us? Because people are, people are nervous and I get it because there's so many things out there. So tons of people are like skeptical, Karen Shears, to join because they've tried so many things in the past and they're like, what's gonna be different? What's gonna be different? And so please, can you guys help us to show people and tell people and explain to them how this truly is different? I don't want it to come from me or Sarit. People won't believe us because of course we're biased and we want people to sign up and we want your money or we want whatever. No, like we want to transform your life and we know that we have the tools to do so you just have to trust us and jump in. That's all I have to say. Yeah, especially if you're at a point, if you're like, you know what, I just don't trust myself. This is when we're like, have we not proven ourselves yet to be trustworthy? <laughs> like we show up for you five days a week. But we also recognize if you're not ready, you won't be ready and that's right. okay. We right. respect any decision that you make. You're gonna be seeing emails about it this week though. You're gonna be seeing posts about it. We might even directly message some of you who we think should, should join based off of any kind of prayer conversation that we've had. So please don't be offended and think that we're telling you, uh, you suck and you're fat and you need to lose weight, so join our challenge. If you've expressed any kind of interest or struggle with this, yeah, you can expect that we're gonna reach out to you because that is our duty. As living beings, that is our duty and our responsibility to serve you. Amen so, to that. That's what we are. We love for. you. This was epic. We hope you have an epic week ahead. Tomorrow, another episode. This week is going to be fire, 6.30 a.m. Um, yeah. We've given you a lot of action, so I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Take yeah. care, you guys. Do this. Sign, do this. Do that. Yeah. Sign up. Share this. Let's end it at that. Live your best life. Life is really too short. Have an amazing day, you guys. We love you. Bye.